What's going on everybody? So, you know, everybody's got all this extra free time on their hands, so I'm sitting around the shop kind of trying to figure out stuff to do, really, because <laughs> I've kind of done all the fun projects that I have was really looking forward to get to, and uh, yeah, now I'm scrounging, but I've got these two Tamiya SRB chassis, a more recent acquisition. I got them together. It's a pretty good deal, I think. Um, they were for sale, uh, I think this one was 150 and this was 175 and that was reduced price off Marketplace. And they've been up for a little while, so I've messaged the guy and uh, offered 240 I ended up paying 260 for both of them, which I think that's a fair price. But, um, yeah, so they, I don't think they were priced accordingly because this one is a Rough Rider type chassis. And it is in a lot better shape. This is the Ford Ranger. I've never had one of these. Um, there are some differences. They're both missing parts. They both have full equipment, all antiquated electronics. Um, somebody that had these in their collection at one point, they really were in the racing. And they have like quick charge ports on the side. They've cut holes and mounted into the actual electronics trays. But the main reason I got these is I want to try and build a rat rod bug. After doing some stuff, I've had that body for a while that's weathered and stuff. And, and uh, a lot of comments where you need a Volkswagen suspension. And uh, this is the only thing remotely like it out there. So one of these is going to be a donor. And one of them is going to get put away for future restoration, I imagine. And uh, that's good though. I need some parts here for my... Other one, I've raced this at USTE in uh, 2018, my first year out there, and it had some issues. And it needs a little, it needs a dry, rear drive shaft and a couple little things to get it back running again. And I just didn't get a chance to get to it before USTE last year. But overall, that is a super clean original buggy. But uh, let's take a look at these two new ones we got here. Um, also, I got my Sand Scorcher in the back there, the Apocalypse Scorcher. If you haven't seen those videos, check them out. They are kind of cool. That's a neat little project. And yes, I know fiberglass Baja Bug front end and rear fenders don't rust, but it's scale world, so mine did. <laughs> All right, so first up, I haven't even been into these yet. I barely even looked at them. It's kind of a spur of the moment deal, and I just got put aside. Uh, let's see if we can open this thing up. I haven't looked at any electronics really. It's got the original battery in it and everything. It's got the battery pack. It's kind of a archaeology here. So this one I'm guessing was a Rough Rider or Super Buggy or whatever you want to call it. That battery is whoa. This is a 1200 milliamp. <laughs> it's still plugged in. Good lord. And it has the breaker and everything on it. That's wild. I've never seen one of those before. That's even before my time as far as uh, electronics go. He's got handwritten numbers on this battery. I don't know what all that means, but that's pretty wild. That thing is cooked, though. It's all lumpy, out of shape. You can see where the cells got hot, and it's uh, yeah, deformed the battery. But, you know, it's neat to see. So, radio-wise, we've got some really really old Futaba. I've never even seen that logo for Futaba. It's got the mechanical speed controller on the servo on this side. We've got steering on that side. The little boot and everything is there and intact. Pretty decent looking. That's one thing this... Oh, listen to that. <laughs> it's got the uh, little heat sink on the back here for the speed controller. Which is absolute garbage, but I don't know. A lot of people that build shelf queens for these, they restore them and clean it all up. They want period correct electronics and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not, I'm not going to just chunk them. I don't think I'll really put it on eBay or anything. It's not worth the, the time or the money. But if anybody's interested in antiquated electronics, I will gladly uh, sell them cheap. Um, I'm not going to pull the radio box out, but it does a Futaba receiver which is ginormous but fits this platform perfectly because I guess that was all sign of the times but the bones of this this one are actually really good so we've got 
the front axle and everything and it works flawlessly the springs and the shocks feel feel fantastic they feel better than better than mine <laughs> i've rebuilt mine and on the rear it looks like uh cpp shocks maybe with the outboard springs it's very stiff you see there's a a lot of chassis flex on this thing. These do have the fiberglass chassis. Um, no idea of the motor or anything. Like I said, I haven't had it apart yet. But I, that's part of the reason I think this one's going to be the, the keep and restore or keep and modify because it's all there. It's all working. And, uh, well, I don't know about electronics, but the chassis, the suspension is all there. The gearing. The gearbox sounds... You can almost hear the fluid in it. Um, all the wiring and stuff looks pretty crispy. Got some overheated marks on there and stuff like that. But I think that this one's too nice. The only thing it's missing is our rear cage for the motor, the roll bar, and all the stuff that goes on the back. So I don't think that's going to be real hard to find because it's just the standard uh, Super Champ or whatever this one is, like <laughs> Rough Rider. Um, underneath looks actually really clean. The bumper is in pretty good shape. The gray plastic, of course, always uh, fades out. But all our suspension and everything looks good. Drive shafts and stuff. Eh, they got a fair amount of slop in them. They actually have a lot of slop in them. <laughs> Get you a closer look at that. That's fine. So you can see that. Look at that slop. <laughs> it's. I, that's almost an inch of movement. <laughs> and like I said, the gearing's locked, so that's all in the shafts on both sides. But hey, if it works, it works. Um, underneath, though, everything looks actually really nice. Not a whole lot of wear. It's not all scratched up like everything I had when I was a kid. Tires, of course, are pretty shot. These might get one run out of them. The front ones are flat spotted severely. Um, one of them is. It's hard as a rock. <laughs> but, you know, this thing is early 80s, so... Yeah, it's not that bad. has some uh, upgraded screws at some point. It's not all Phillips head to Mia. We have flat heads holding the bumper on. It's scary. Like, one of the funniest things is there's a foot and a half of uh, antenna. It's wrapped around the roll bar, tied in a loose knot. But, man, I don't remember them being that long. <laughs> runs all the way from up here out the back and yeah uh, that is literally that's a three foot antenna <laughs> if I can hold it in the camera I mean it goes all the way to the back of the shop that's nuts so overall this one I, I think is definitely worth saving it is functional it just needs a little modernization some electronics and um, yeah tires <laughs> I actually have a couple different options for tires for these that I could use, but I'm not ready to do all that right now. Like I said, I want to get my yellow one up and running again, and, um, you know, this will be something I'll put away for later. These are getting harder and harder to find, and it's just, it's getting harder and harder for me to say no to vintage Tamiya stuff when I find it for sale. So let's take a look at the Ranger, the F-150 or F-100 Ranger, whatever it was that they stuck on this chassis and pretended it made sense. All right, so it's basically the same thing. A few differences. The rear cage is actually broken off in this one. It's still screwed in. Um, this upper hoop is specific to that truck and that puts the bed floor flush. I don't have a, I don't have one of those bodies, the Blackfoot body is basically what it is. Um, body bolts to here, and your on off switch sticks through. Um, one thing the guy that sold it to me, he wasn't sure there was a hole in the top of both of these. But I'm guessing it's for that reason right there. Is that breaker, if it flips, because your battery, you can push that little red button with something. And it'll do something magical. Yeah. <laughs> so it does make sense. Not very, uh, dust proof or waterproof, but... Um, but anyway, this one is a little rougher. We've got... It's missing the heat sink, but we do have the wires run back here for the mechanical speed control. Batteries are butt connected together with some electrical tape, kind of janky. Um, rear shocks, pretty soft, but they're they're functional. Front shocks, no good. 
So this one is not even connected to the thing. It's they're both seized. They're seized up completely. I couldn't pull that one down. So I'm guessing that's why it was taken off. <clears throat> Missing the rear cage. Um one of them had I was missing one of these little locks for the body. I think it's inside one of the tubs. I did see that when I was loading them. Come on. There we go. There's one there. Come on. I don't know what's going on with this thing. Then we got another three foot antenna wire. There we go. Just need to see what I'm doing. Oh, we still got batteries and home line super heavy duty. I've never heard of such an animal. And Dollar General. Wow. Classic. <laughs> you know, I think somebody went as far as to put a, a battery charge port on their uh, tub. We're really concerned about battery life. They wouldn't use Dollar General batteries, but whatever. I don't judge. Pull this mess out of here and see what we got. So we got the same battery. This one is not as heat damaged. Looks a bit newer. May not be. They actually had the same label. Again, the same 7.2, 1200 milliamp. Standard charging time 14 to 16 hours. Good lord, we've come a long way. But yeah, this one is, you can see now, this one is all swole up. Pretty bad shape. The other one is actually pretty nice. <laughs> Half tempted to put it on a charger and see what we get. So basically, the same setup. We've got I'm guessing slightly newer Futaba stuff. Um, it is the gold label. The other one had a red and some other colors on the, the logos and stuff. But still just as antiquated. I didn't ever know anything about these little breakers that they put in. That's that's pretty cool. I, my other uh, Rough Rider came with one of those. I just of course took it all out because I didn't know what to do with it. But that mechanical speed control. <laughs> that's awesome. It's a little more compact than the ones that we had in the 90s, it seems like, the way it's mounted and everything. It's pretty neat. But um, this one, like I said, both front shocks are seized. Rear shocks, this one's really nice. This one is stiff, it feels bent. Um, same, like I said, Futaba receiver in there, but it's gold label. Um, this one, the steering arms are bent and broken. That one's broken off at the end, but that servo. <laughs> I dare say that's no good. But uh, the, the torsion arm and everything feels good and that's the part we're going to use off of this. So I want to take the rear suspension, gearbox and everything, and the front suspension and try to put them on a rat rod bug maybe. I don't know. Um, I feel bad because this is a bit more rare, being the F-150 Ranger. Um, it has the wide tires all around. Of course, they're all pretty well shot. Backs are flat spotted pretty good because the extra weight. But, yeah, this does have bushings in the front. That's awesome. What do the other one have? The other one actually has ball bearings, so... I don't know. It's kind of a weird mix. I think the newer electronics would be with the... Uh, ball bearings and stuff, but it's opposite. So I'm not sure yet about wheelbase or anything or what I'm gonna do. I just, I've been looking for some of these that I could use for parts. Didn't wanna get anything too nice because I don't wanna tear up any, uh, you know, decent pieces. But I think this one is good to, to scrap. And you know how I am, I'll keep everything and I'll use every bit of it. I found the other, uh, lock pin inside the box, put it in, see what the gearbox feels like. Feels pretty good. So you can see underneath they're basically the same thing. Um, I believe even the F-150s came with the bumper too, so there's really not a whole lot of difference other than that um, upper roll bar shape. I think I got a pretty good deal as far as uh, vintage Tamiya stuff goes. And I feel like these are going to be more useful useful to me more than buying another bruiser. I've had a lot of bruisers over the, the years and 
even with my HG reproduction bruiser, it's like, what, what do I do with it, you know? They're cool and they're neat to build, but they're just not any fun. <laughs> but uh, these SRBs are actually pretty fun. They, they're they a handful to drive, that's for sure. Um, when I raced the, the yellow one at USTE two years ago, it was it, I was not prepared, <laughs> needless to say. And uh, driving the Apocalypse Beetle, it is just strictly driven by throttle. You can't really steer much without uh, adjusting the the gas and that was bone stock you know that was just I think that was still running yeah it's still got a nickel metal battery in it so it's pretty quick the gearing on these is is uh sporty to say the least I did want to show more about the suspension so these have a basically a torsion style suspension um, if you're familiar with Volkswagen Beetles they have this beam as they call it um, I've never dealt with one in real life but this has a spring and it that's pretty much your recoil is your spring off of your uh, your beam but it looks the part I've seen pictures and stuff I haven't ever actually worked on a beetle but it looks like that and um, the rear is a torsion bar and it's really kind of hard to show but well no actually it's not <laughs> so you can see it right here with the tray lifted up it's got a hooked in on that rod and it fits into this rear control arm it runs all the way up here underneath our box and it crosses over to the other side and does the same thing and it's just a torsion bar so a lot of your recoil is based off of that this one it kind of defeats the purpose having these extra springs on these shocks but yeah that's uh that's why the apocalypse bug sits with the camber in the back because i've <laughs> removed the springs from it I put them in and it just set up too high because that, that's a reproduction. That's one of the uh, reproduction sand scorchers, aftermarket chassis, whole bunch of stuff. And the uh, torsion beams in the back didn't really work well with the aftermarket chassis. So, and plus I just like the look of it cambered out in the back. And but anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. I appreciate y'all watching um, this little Tamiya history, little informative session. If you hadn't, not familiar with these, check them out. It's pretty cool. I mean, these are late 70s early 80s RC tech and it's actually by today's standard it's still pretty relevant and uh, it's just one of those neat little things that you know <laughs> it's better than a lot of RC cars we have today for being 40 years old <laughs> but anyways I appreciate you watching be sure to like subscribe and share and don't forget also I have uh, merchandise for sale below t-shirts and stickers every little bit helps keep the channel afloat these tough times i'm hoping uh, everybody's enjoying their free time and not not worrying too much and um yeah keep it scale i'll see you all in the next one